So our first question is, when did you start getting into racing and how did you get started? I started racing more or less when I was eight years old. Um, I was really into horse riding then. So I was competing uh, in this sport called horse ball. It's quite a crazy sport with uh, play with horses, obviously. And then um, suddenly my dad got a go-kart for my brother and he said, uh, do you want to give it a go? And so he bought my brother to a go-karting track. And then suddenly he was like bringing him, not me. And I really wanted to give it a go just to show my dad that I could do it as well, not only my little brother. So I tried it and I absolutely fell in love with racing. And then from then um, I started doing a few races. I had to choose between horse riding and uh, go-karts. So I chose go-karts and I pursued the career and it got me to here. And the first couple of years I did it with my brother uh, and then he preferred playing football. So here I am. So the next question for you is, um, who was or is your biggest inspiration? It's, it's a funny question, this, because I always feel that there's people that I can inspire, um, you know, from anyone, like even you guys, you know, you, you, you're doing all this work uh, for pure passion. And that's true commitment. It's hard work and everything. And I really feel that you can get inspired from people like you to Lewis Hamilton to my mother. You know, you can find inspiration, you know, with anyone around us because anyone that has a passion and has willpower will be will be a source of inspiration. Okay, thank you. That sounds very lovely, actually. <laughs> what are your goals for the future in motorsports or outside of it? Uh, well, for sure, to preserve my career as a racing car driver, but also to to be an example for future generations, especially female drivers, not only as a driver, but simply as a as a person that turned their passion into their you know their career, their job, and there are so many ways to live your passion through. I mean, like racing is magic as a racing car driver, but it's also magic as a team member or as a journalist. Um, so uh, for sure to be an example and be helpful for the new generations of females that want to get into the sport. So what is your favorite racetrack you've raced at? Obviously, Spa Francorchamps. Champs, we're actually leaving to race this Wednesday. It's just amazing. It's like a roller coaster and it's got the perfect flow. It's a really cool, a cool track. Uh, I loved it with the Dallara 312 car. It was a really light car, so you could carry on a lot of speed, but ultimately it's the best track ever with any car. If you've seen a motorsport event live, what has been your favorite? I'm watching Le Mans right now, <laughs> okay? So for sure, Le Mans is just, wow, great. Uh, but then obviously there's Monaco as well. I wish, I really would like to go and see Indy as well, Indy 500. Uh, I think those are the three top uh, motorsports events. What would be your advice for people wanting to get started in motorsport? You know, motorsport is really tricky. You know, everybody says, oh, just start, try a lot. Motorsport is tricky because it's expensive and it's expensive for anyone, not as a, as a, only as a driver, but it would be expensive also as a journalist because you need to travel a lot and everything. So um, for sure, uh, I mean, this will sound a bit cheesy, but um, at the end, I used to read uh, interviews, like top drivers, and they would say, you know, the secret is to have fun. And I always thought that as a silly suggestion, you know, like, why? of course, I'm going to have fun. But then actually, if you have fun, you are better, you are a better driver, you're faster. And I think that reflects to anything so obviously to have fun and just simply try and be there try and be in the racetracks try and be in the events um because you know you could get opportunities and everything obviously karting is the best way to start as a driver if you can't go with karting there's a sim uh, racing world which is way more accessible and easier and you know if you are a sim driver for example and you want to get into racing okay, be a sim driver, but just also try to be uh, in the racing world, in go and see races and understand and just simply enjoy it. 
so of course motorsport is very hectic especially in race weekends so when you have the free time to relax what do you usually do i uh, wish we had the time to relax especially w series um we really get there wednesday evening thursday it's flat out from media to track walk and all those kind of duties and then friday we have free practice and qualifying really close and then there's a race weekend so there's not much time to relax because often the time that you could relax you start with media duties or photos and stuff like that and that is on w series but it's also on many other championships like for example you know if you race a 24 hour man you you've got a lot of that stuff going on so it's not easy to relax but then you know i try to talk to my friends my family uh, my boyfriend i try to just you know relax i do a lot of netflix i find that if i watch a series it's really easy to disconnect so you'll see me in my trailer watching netflix with mechanics going up and down and i'm completely in a different zone if i can relax because sometimes it's good just to get your mind out of it what does a typical race weekend look like for you well we arrive to the track wednesday uh you know you you fly to the airport you drive to the track you check in to the hotel often wednesday unless you get there maybe in the morning then you might have some media duties to do so photos videos obviously w series does a lot of social media content and that you know all needs time making so we often do that wednesday afternoon then thursday normally it's way in uh track walk briefing everything to get the weekend prepared there's a you know meetings with the engineer we actually also use the simulator sometimes to to prepare even better and then friday we start with free practice 30 minutes qualifying 30 minutes there's not much time between the two sessions so really it's flat out because you know between free practice and then in a two hour break you have uh from pre practice qualifying you really have to focus all your energies to get uh, and go look at that data decide if you want to change some things in the car some things take a little bit of time so you need to decide them quickly and then you do the uh, qualifying 30 minutes uh then often you're really tired and you just want to go to your hotel then you have other stuff to do maybe media interviews post race post quali interviews stuff like that and you get to the hotel you die in your bed and where you wait for this race saturday morning uh saturday afternoon often we go to the track even early and then again me just stuff just talk to engineer prepare understand maybe it could rain or rain you know just you know try and think uh, i think about it imagine it sort it out often before i go in the race i do a little few laps in the simulator just to get you know my mind in the flow and then there's a race and then pretty much it's all over then <laughs> so you you go back to your hotel often w series organize some dinners with all us drivers just to create that family feeling and everything and then sunday you fly home so it's you know at the end of the day it's three and a half days but it feels like a month it's so intense obviously you're doing this as kind of part of your career or full time as career um so when was the moment that it clicked to you that this is what you wanted to do the most so like when i was racing go karting obviously i liked cars and everything my dad didn't come from a racing background so we didn't know much about racing we didn't know about all you know the c the feeder series and everything and obviously there as a you know social media wasn't a thing when i was a kid so like you know you used to look at a few websites and watch races in television and everything just to understand then i started uh, so like for my birthday present when i was 15 my dad got me this uh driving course with old formula fords i loved it i purely enjoyed it but then again i didn't see any girls racing so i didn't know if it was something i could do i did a couple of years of formula albert uh i loved it enjoyed it and then when they called me to GGB3 and I raced in Monaco uh then it clicked in and I was like this is real like in two years and a half I'm already racing in Monaco in GGB3 this is amazing I was like how did I even get here like I could not I could not believe I actually got there you know from a girl that was just like kind of trying and seeing what would happen but you know we didn't have any racing examples in my my family and everything we didn't have the backing we could have to get you know in higher series and stuff so i suddenly i found myself there and i was like wow this is real 
And I think there I clicked in. I was like, this is what I want to do. In one way or another, I want to do this. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it sounds very like a very nice path, but also a bit, I imagine that it's hard for young girls to get into motorsport more because obviously there, now there are more girl examples, but in the past, of course, there weren't that many. So I totally no. get that. That was difficult. Yeah, yeah, it was difficult. And then it's, it's it's a difficult you know it's also really money related and everything you know it's difficult I remember having meetings with sponsors trying to get a drive and they were like but can you race like do you race with males or females like what what do you do like where do you race do you race in the track behind your house no I actually go racing in spa and I was like oh so then you're racing in high level yeah but you're a girl and I was like yeah I know (laughs) <laughs> it was just hard to get even the message across you know so sometimes it was a bit frustrating and then yeah it's a really uh, again I hate saying it but it's a money related sport and ultimately you know the more time you spend in the car the faster you'll be and like anything you know and it's a lot like you play football and you want to be a better football player and you just play the afternoon in the backyard of your house you know you need to play properly and racing you can't just go I mean I bet there are a few people that have maybe race tracks at home, but I'm not one of them. So, <laughs> so it's hard to even, you know, to develop as a driver as well. It's quite difficult. Yeah, I'm yeah. very thankful that there's now a W series that can motivate younger girls to get into motorsports. I think that's such a good idea and I'm glad that there is something now. Yeah, absolutely. W series is the best platform because it doesn't only give the opportunity to me and other 19 girls, but it also gives the opportunity to younger generations to say, look, I'm carding and I want to be really good because I want to get to W series, you know, and there's, there's something you can hope for, you know what I mean? So it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So do you think more women will get involved in motorsport now that we have things such as the W series and a lot more, you know, access to social media platforms to put um, those kind of things out there? Yeah, absolutely. So it's going in the right direction. I still feel that sometimes it's that in some countries and I mean, like in the UK, it's amazing. There's so many platforms. Um, it's more accessible, you know, even getting to a racetrack, watching races, there's, there's so much things to do. In other countries like Italy, for instance, it's still way more difficult. Uh, but then for sure, we're getting in the right direction. And then I mean, and social media is amazing because it just shows the human side of the sport. You know, you, you can be with a person, you know, you like you wish you want to race in Le Mans, you follow the drivers, you see, you see it through their perspective and it's getting better and better. Obviously I like the social media when it's a bit dirty in a way. Like I don't like all the posh filming and everything with this, because that, I think that takes away the, the sense of it you know uh, I mean I want to be I watch a cool video I'm going to look at YouTube or television you know social media is cool because it shows the reality then we all know that social media is pretty much like if you look at my social media I'm the perfect girl with a perfect life trust me sometimes it's hell but it's hell for anyone you know that's that's social media but yeah. uh, for sure yeah for sure now it's getting all more accessible accessible and i I think we need uh, to get it more accessible in other countries as well. Yeah, I think I agree on that one as well, because obviously and what I'm lucky enough to live in the Netherlands where social media is kind of rising up more and more also for women who want to be in motorsport. But I definitely have know some countries that indeed don't have those things. And I think it's just important for everyone to be able to get involved, no matter who you yeah. are yeah yeah in any way you know in any way so like uh even getting you know going to the races and not paying tickets that's already a great thing you know like uh just yeah trying to make it a bit more accessible and everything and give people a go at it you know like no girl would go and try go-karting for a first time but then if there are maybe platforms that go to the schools and create opportunities with the schools and girls go and try it it would be cool you know so, yeah, we'll see. Hopefully it'll get better and better, but it's already in the right direction. Yeah, those were our questions. Thank you so much for taking the time to answer them. And, uh, yeah. Thank you. We'll Thank you, guys. Week. Have a nice Sunday. Yes, you, you too. too. Thank you very much. Ciao. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye. guys.